How easy was that? What have we been on? Like 30 minutes so far? It's pretty easy. But wait, there's more! So on this episode of How We Do, we're going to show you how we hang our gates from start to finish and what we use as far as products. First off, to start off with the hinges, Cornerstone are the hinges that we use. Only the best. Find the link below. Along with that, we are going to use the, key, the Keystone Latch Series. Uh, later on, when we put this thing on, we can talk about uh, a lot of the pros with this latch. A lot of the cool features that everybody likes and the ones that we really enjoy that we can pass along to the customer. For starters, Andrew and I are going to get ready to hang this gate. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark it out. We want our hinges to go right in where our rails are. So typically what we do is we come down two inches and then we put that hinge there. And then we want our bottom hinge anywhere. We want it to be anywhere around that bottom rail. When I come into that bottom rail about an inch and a half and I put my mark in. And that's where we're going to put that hinge at. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm putting the exact same marks on this leaf as I just put on that post. When using these hinges, there is one thing to point out. These are fully adjustable hinges. So what I mean by that is they have these oblong slots here, horizontally on this side, vertically on this side. What's supposed to go where? Vertical is supposed to go on the post, horizontal is supposed to go on the gate. This way you can slide up and down on your post with your whole entire gate, or you can kick your gate in or out. Now, if you notice your brackets, there's two different. They're the same, but they're different sizes. So one is designated one area and same with the other. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna do a test fit to figure out which bracket goes where. So this one right here, the small one, is going to go on our gate post. The big one is going to go on our gate leaf. Now that we got those two separated, we're going to separate the other two. And it is a really good idea to separate them that far, so that way you can't get them mixed up and accidentally put one on the wrong post. I have done that, and that is why I choose this method. These are not pre-drilled. We're just going right beneath each mark. Or the hardware included in them with the kit has a self tapper on it. So it penetrates through the vinyl very nicely. And underneath the powder coating is stainless steel. It doesn't get any better than that. I always like to gently just run that first screw in so that way it doesn't throw that hinge off. That bracket for the hinge. All right, now we can go ahead and put our hinges on there. Remember that vertical oblong holes go on the post, horizontal goes on the gate. So they give you acorn nuts for all the nuts on here, nuts and washers. It's a 7 16 wrench ratchet that you need to tighten them down. And I would not recommend by any means to use an impact. And the reason that I say that and you want to stick to a wrench, it's just plastic on the back side. So the stud that comes through with the threads that you're actually putting the, the nut on, if you hit it too hard, you can actually cause it to strip out and then you have a really hard time getting the nut back off if you ever need to adjust your gate. So definitely, definitely do not hit it with an impact or a drill or anything. Try and just use manual tools. Post caps are not just for post caps. They're also there to hold all your hardware so you don't lose it in the dirt. Take advantage of it. So now that we got the gate set right where we want it, 
We're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. We're not going like almighty tight. Once you feel some decent resistance, go ahead and stop. Because those teeth that are on the back side, what we're doing is we're marrying the two pieces together and those teeth lock into each other to the point where it can't move because that nut is just there so that the hinge can't come off and the teeth can slip. That's why it's a very nice hinge system that we that we use. So now we can go ahead and move on to that latch that we were talking about. So this piece is gonna be the piece that goes on the inside of the gate. What's gonna happen is if you're on the inside of the gate, you're gonna push this button. It's gonna push this rod through and it's gonna open that. Let me unlock it. So you push the button and see it opens, it actuates the closure. So you can open it from inside of the fence and then obviously on the outside of the fence you're just gonna flip up on that little lever and it's gonna give you access to your yard. Before we mark out where the latch needs to go, as you can see there's already a latch on this post. This is a double drive gate and instead of a drop rod or a cane bolt we're using another post. For right now we're gonna go ahead and match the height of this latch with our current latch that we're gonna put on. To the center point you're gonna get a little bracket on on here in your package that looks like this. You're gonna see an eighth, five eighths, five eighths, and an eighth. Those are just the size of the holes you need to pre-drill. These two holes you're gonna drill out to either a half inch or a five eighths hole. And those three holes are just your hardware holes, so those are gonna be eighth inch holes as well. Right there is the little arrow. So your mark that you measure to needs to go right there. So we're gonna line that center hole up right up on my 32 inch mark. We choose to put our latches about halfway in between the gate. So that, that way there's structural integrity in between the top and the bottom. It's not just blowing on one side or the other. It's, it's fully in the center. You're gonna do the same thing that you just did on the other side of the post. Because again, those, those rods have to pass through that post. Clean everything up and now we're ready to put the, well actually now we're ready to drill the bigger hole and then put the hardware on. So to drill the bigger hole, we're using a half inch paddle bit. And the reason that we're using a half inch paddle bit versus an actual drill bit is we can control how fast that bit goes into the post. I think it was a while ago, it was in the middle of the winter. The post was set in concrete, it was just a single swing gate. I used a drill bit to drill this and it was a brand new bit and it aggressively went in really fast and it broke out this whole entire piece of the post. I had to pull the whole entire post and set a new post just to fix this little oops right here. So. I would definitely invest in the uh, paddle bit and use that versus a drill bit. And see, you still get a nice clean hole. Just make sure you don't drill too fast. One other thing I didn't talk about with this latch, this particular latch system, another benefit, just like everything, Maybe you have a left hinge gate or a right hinge gate and you have to reverse everything around. You can do that with this latch system. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna undo these four screws right here. And then this particular one, there's a spring. So when you get all these four screws undone, you're gonna flip this thing around and rotate it 180 degrees and put it all back together. You're gonna do the same thing in this side, in this particular one, and then that one, there is no spring. So you don't have as much to worry about, but there is a couple parts and pieces in there. So just make sure that whatever you do, you're very gentle and you're over something hard so that way you can't lose, you can't lose what's inside. I wouldn't recommend flipping it over the grass, uh, definitely over a cardboard box or a piece of concrete. Something hard so you can't lose parts and pieces. <clears throat> So those little eighth inch holes that you pre-drilled, you're gonna put a screw in every single one of those. Alright, now we're ready to 
can put the, the strike on. So I'm just gonna do one on there, one hole for now. And I'm gonna test everything. I'm gonna bring it down just a touch. Once you get it put right where you want it, you can finish drilling all your holes. How easy was that? What have we been on, like 30 minutes so far? It's pretty easy. But wait, there's more! Slam handle with the bumper. I know what you're thinking right now. Slam handle, sl what's a slam handle? Bumper? What do you mean bumper? So I'm just gonna put this right above the latch and I'm gonna match it in height with the other one. Let me screw it in and then I'm gonna tell you all about it. So typically, well one, it's nice to have a handle so that, that way when you open the gate, you're not just pulling on the strike all the time. So you can open the gate, put your hand right here in the handle and have control of that gate at all times. So that way, if you're holding here, the wind doesn't take it out of your hand. You got a nice handle, but it does have a bumper on it. So instead of when the gate comes to close, it's not always hitting this and putting all the force and pressure on this at all times. It also has the slam handle to rest upon. And it can't go past that point to the point where it's just putting excess, excessive wear on the strike. It also has its little buddy up here to the point where it doubles together and it creates a really nice closing system. Now, just to put the finishing touches on the gate, we also supply not only a handle on the outside, but a handle on the inside. We want our customers to uh, have entire control over their gate when they're passing through it in or out. We do like everything to match and be uniform. So it's very critical to us that this leaf right here is very identical to that leaf and that nothing is out of proportion and everything just looks nice and clean. You wanna know one more cool thing about those hinges? Did I tell you that they're self-closing? Yeah, that's right. They're self-closing. So what we're going to do is they provide you with an Allen wrench. And there's a there's a keyway in each hinge for to receive the Allen wrench. And what you're going to do is you're going to put that Allen wrench in there and turn it one special direction to put some tension on that spring so that when the gate opens, it puts tension on it and the spring goes back to its natural resting position to kick that gate closed. Well, we'll put a little tension on it this way and see if it's right. Come self -opening and we get it wrong. Here's some tension and see if that'll work for you. And we don't like to put a ton of pressure on it because we want a nice gentle close instead of that that slam we're just gonna put a little bit on one hinge if we feel like we need more then we can always go down to that bottom hinge and put some on that a little much a little much but it is a little breezy you did have some good tension on there Make sure to stay tuned. Uh, following this video will be another video of how to put on a post cap. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the glue and you're gonna put a little dab of glue right there. Uh, not too much. And then you're gonna put another little dab of glue right there. And then you're gonna just up on top of the post. Just that right there. Oh, that's gonna get a lot of views. 
All right, so we were telling you when we were hanging this gate that this is a double drive gate. And you're probably sitting at home watching this video going, that is not a double drive gate. There's a post in the center, genius. But it is. Come on, I wouldn't lie to you. I'll show you. There's one leaf. I don't have another guy, so hold on, hold on. One sec. I do got a saw. So on a traditional double drive gate, you have the cane bolt. And what I mean is you have that little bolt that goes back here and it goes into that little piece of concrete. We've, we've done it that way for such a long time. What we've found is that the wind plays havoc on these gates. So your anchor point is down here while the wind has the rest of this five feet to play with and just blow that gate around and sometimes if it's a really nasty wind and it hits just right it can blow the gate the whole entire gate apart so we talked amongst ourselves we came up with a great solution a double drive gate that latches into a post with a removable post that's right a removable post this post is going to come out of the ground so if you want to drive through here you just pull that post right out of the sleeve put this on the side and then you can pull whatever you want through here. And that's the point of these gates is a lot of people want these gates because, well, it's the what if factor. What if I want to go back there? What if I need to, you know, park something back there? What if something breaks and they have to dig something up? We get it. We totally understand it. That's why we came up with this. So I know you're also thinking, well, that's all great and awesome, but how do you control how far in that, that vinyl post goes back in? into that sleeve. Well, if you come over here, I'll show you. There's a bolt down there. So that bolt is about so far off the bottom. As over time, if debris ever gets up past the bolt, you just gotta clean that debris back out. And then that post will come back in contact with the resting point, this stop being the bolt, and then everything will line back up perfectly again. Make sure you pay attention which way it goes. You slide that back into the sleeve. Shut that gate. <laughs> See the wind, I'm telling you, the wind. be tested. It's held solid. Thanks for hanging out with us. It was fun having you here. We'll see you on the next job. You have a good dang day. Four screws, take them out, flip it over, put it back on. But that one's gonna have a big spring in it and it's gonna come out and hit you in the face. We should get that on video. <laughs>